Hey friends, good afternoon. A uh, quick note, we're gonna have our charge conference this afternoon at about two th at 2.30. Uh, that's only about two hours from now. Uh, you, we'll be on the, the charge conference Zoom call with Dr. Cynthia Davis. And I have here today her prayer for us that I would like to read as we open this video and, and our time together. So let us pray. Gracious and holy God, Savior Jesus, who sits at the right hand, and glorious Holy Spirit, who makes intercession for us, thank you for the gift and glory of this day. Thank you for answering prayers in ways that we had not imagined, filling our hearts with praise and thanksgiving. We are grateful that you have given strength and endurance for the race set before us, we are able to be resilient and steadfast because we keep our eyes upon Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Hallelujah. Our communities and nation are reeling from the record-breaking number of COVID cases. Thousands of families are visiting food banks and church pantries to sustain their loved ones. Hospitals are running out of beds, ventilators, and staff. Teachers are being quarantined as classrooms and schools shudder. No matter what is before us, we are keeping our eyes upon Jesus. Many church doors are closed, but ministries continue to flourish so that most of the vulnerable know that they are not forgotten as sermons arrive in the mail. Bible studies are on conference calls and visitors come to the windows of nursing homes to wave, smile, and pray. We are keeping our eyes upon Jesus. Families separated and longing for hugs and kisses that are not virtual. Children wanting to settle into a generous lapse of the grandparents those hospitalized, unable to receive visitors, and in the midst of it all, health care providers are exhausted and frustrated, overworked, and most of the time, underappreciated. But we are keeping our eyes upon Jesus. Because of the great cloud of witnesses on whose shoulders of faith we stand, we will not become weary or lose heart in the pilgrimage set before us. As Helen Limmel penned these words, we sing them for our engagement and for your glory. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. In the name above all names, Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm. I'm going to jump right into our Bible study or our, our sermon text for today. Uh, this comes straight from the lectionary and it's Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 through 30. Um, listen to Jesus' words. For it is just like a man about to go on a journey who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, each according to his own ability. And he went on his journey. Immediately the one who had received the five talents went and traded with them and gain five more talents. In the same manner, the one who had received the two talents gained two more. But he who had received the one talent went away, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five talents came up and brought five more talents, saying, Master, you entrusted five talents to me. See, I have gained five more talents. 
His master said to him, well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Also, the one who had received the two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who also, who had received the one talent, came up and said, Master, I know you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seed. And I was afraid, and I went away, and I hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. But his master answered and said to him, You wicked, lazy slave. You knew that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have at least put my money in the bank. And on my arrival, I would have received my money back with interest. Therefore, take away the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more shall be given. And he will have an abundance. But from the one... From the one who does not have, even what he does shall be taken away. Throw out the worthless slave into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me and for me today, friends. Heavenly Father, open my mouth. And let me speak your words of grace and compassion to your people that will hear this and see this all over the world. Help us as we come to a better understanding of your holy word in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, friends, the who, what, where, when, why. We're past the temple stage. We're back. Jesus is out alone with the disciples. Uh, they're, they're over on the Mount of Olives. And Jesus is sitting down kind of fielding questions. And while they were still in Jerusalem, they asked Jesus when the end would be. And Jesus said, I, I don't know. And you don't know. And nobody knows. Not even the angels in heaven or the son himself. Jesus was referring to himself in the third person. So last week we had a parable of 10 virgins at the wedding party. Today we have a parable of three servants and their master gives them gifts. Um, now I, I want to back away from the Bible just for a minute and, and let's think about the apostles creed. What do we believe? We believe that uh, we, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the virgin, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. Now is the part. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence or from there, he will come to judge the quick and the dead. And I want you to hear this parable with that frame as, as kind of our light that's going to shine light on this text for us today. We need to see all of these, here's a big word, eschatological parables from Jesus in the light of the fact, not the daydream, the fact that Jesus is coming back. But here's the thing. I hear people say, 
Oh, if Jesus came back, I wouldn't want to get caught doing that. Oh, if Jesus came back, I wouldn't want to get caught doing that. Nothing in this parable talks about what the servants were doing when the master came back. Everything in this parable, in fact, let me go back. Verse 16. Verse 16 right here. Let me read verse 15 again. To one he gave five talents, to another he gave two, and to another he gave one. Listen to the next word. The first word in, in verse 16. Immediately. Do you know what that word in Greek means? Right now. Right then. Right there. He didn't go sit down. He didn't stop and have a cup of coffee on the way out the door. He took the five talents that his master gave him. And he ran out. And he began to trade with those five talents, and he gained five more. Now that, to me, that makes it sound like it's immediate. You know why it makes it sound like it's immediate? Because it uses the word immediately, right there. Immediately, boom, right then. It doesn't even say that the master was out of town yet. It says, as soon as this person got the five talents, they went to work. Verse 17, in the same manner, the one who had received two talents, he went and gained two more. So we can put two and two together. God gave us that much sense, right? And two and two and four. So immediately the servant slave that got two talents immediately went to work. You know, immediately right now, he didn't stop and have a glass of wine he didn't stop and have a cup of coffee. He didn't stop and jaw jack with his buddies on the way out the door. He immediately went and took the two talents and gained two more. Let's look at the next guy. Immediately, the one who received the one talent went and dug a hole and put his talent in the hole. Now, I, I say all of this in, in the shadow or in the light of this eschatological theology or the end of time theology because the master, when the master comes back, he didn't catch anybody trading anything. He, the guy, person that had five, oh, look, it's 10. It's 10, not, well, I've got the money over here and I need to run and get it. N none of that. I'm done. Here, look, I doubled your money. It, that, that should say that when this master came back, they were already done doing what they were doing. Now, it doesn't mean they were sitting on their hands. It doesn't mean they were sitting on their hands doing nothing. But they were done trading with the master's talents. So, when he came back, he really didn't catch them doing anything. He settled the accounts. They brought in the money. The one that had five, doubled it to ten. The one that had two, doubled it to four. Now, the one that dug the hole and buried it, we need to pay this guy some attention. Or girl, we need to pay this person some attention. So here we go, verse 25. I'm sorry, let me go up to 24. The second half of 24. This guy starts telling his master why he didn't go make him any extra money. Master, I knew you to be a hard man. First mistake about God. God is not hard. Oh, I'll get to that in a minute. I, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you had scattered no seed. And I was afraid. And I went away and I hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. Now, I'm not going to reread the rest of that. But basically, the master really gets you useless, worthless slave. Right? So, now, 
let's let's shine another light from this. So we've we've got the end of times or eschatological. We've got that out there. Now let's let's shine another light. It's a parable. Okay. Let's let's turn the big spotlight on. This is a parable. Remember, my working definition of parable is an earthly story, something here on earth that has a heavenly meaning. So things in the parable are always represented in heaven. The master is God. The servants or slaves, that, uh, depending on which which verse, the, the Greek word is doulos, okay? And that's servant or slave. Uh, this is not the 16, 1700 antebellum slavery where you would go out and, and be, there, there were no beatings going on back then. There were limits of how, uh, there, there were strict Roman laws of how you had to treat your slaves. Very strict. Because a lot of those slaves that were working in the Roman households, they were literally working for Roman citizenship. So when we read slave in the Bible, it's a little different than what we see on on the the TV show Roots, or not TV show, but the 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 epic movie Roots. The, this is not what we're talking about here. The, these were servants; they were slaves. They they had sold themselves into slavery for a certain time, for a certain amount of money. Uh, there was not a lot of abuse, like I said, because there were very strict rules on on the abuse thing. So. I'm slipping up saying servant, slave. Like I said, the Greek word was doulos and it's servant, slave. So God is God is the master. We're the servants and the talents are the gifts that God gives us. In in my Bible, my, my Bible has headings at, at the top of most of the stories. And you see what that says. I can't read this because it's backwards on my screen. The parable of the talents. If I was going to name this, if, if I had to name today's sermon, it would be uh, the Christmas gift that you didn't unwrap. And and the sort of the analogy there is if you give somebody a gift for Christmas and they don't unwrap it, how does that make you feel? You get a little bit tweaked, right? It It would bother you. So, this is exactly what Jesus is telling, this story of the, the talents. Uh, two of them went and made good use of their talents. The one was scared. I, I knew you to be a hard man. And, and th this, is, this is where I, I need to kind of, I need to hit the brakes right here. And we, we need to talk about that. Um, I, I've explained to y'all that I see God's law as rules to a tennis match, the same, kind of the same vein. Because if we were going to play tennis and I hit the ball to you and you hit the ball that way, well, I'm, I'm not having any fun. And you're really not having any fun either because you're knocking the ball out of play. Well, we're not really playing tennis at this point. I'm serving and you're knocking the ball out of play. And, and I, I begin to see some of the frustration that Lewis Carneal used to have with me while he was teaching me to play tennis. I didn't even know how to hold a racket, much less be able to return a serve. So it's not a lot of fun if, if one is serving and one is knocking the ball out of play. What God did with the commandments and the law was put us all on the same level playing field. God gave us boundaries, what not to do and what to do. Everything in the boundaries you could do, everything out of bounds you weren't supposed to do, um, and and we we twist that, we we make it hard. God's mean. Well, uh, are the makers of iPhones are they mean? In in the directions, all five hundred pages of the user's manual for an iPhone. It says, do not use this iPhone in the shower. 
That's my iPhone. I'll use it to shower if I want to. Well, then you wonder why it breaks. Same thing with God's law. We're sort of in the bounds and things that are out of bounds we're not supposed to do. Well, Jesus had to come because we got it so twisted. We got it so mangled. We had things that were actually in bounds, out of bounds. We had things that were out of bounds, in bounds. So Jesus kind of had to come. Jesus had to come and set us straight. Now, in Jesus coming, he took away all our failures, all our sin, and our brokenness. Okay? So, Jesus has kind of reset the rules. Jesus now has put us all on level ground at the foot of the cross. Now, I know the cross is up on a hill, but when we come to the cross, we are all equally sinners. So, for this servant to have this harsh outlook on the master, what about the guy that started out with, or the servant that started out with five talents? He had more to lose than anybody, right? Why did that one not think that the master was so hard that he didn't go bury the five talents? Like I said, there's more there to lose than the one with one talent. So we're sort of, and and I, I would say Jesus is painting this guy in a picture that he's, he's got the idea in his head that he misunderstands the master. Don't misunderstand God's grace. Don't fear God so much that you glue your shoes to the floor. Okay? I believe God would rather you get out of the house and use the gifts that God has given you and fail, then God would rather see you lock yourself in the closet. I, I just, I, I will never believe that because of this right here. So we've, we've got the kind of the end of time light shining down on this. We've got the parable light shining down on this. This is a parable about the end of time. But what does it talk mostly about? Not the end of the time, not not the eschatological stuff that that everybody's making a big deal. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Yeah, Jesus is coming back. Now, what do we do? What do we do today? Figure out what your talents are and go outside and use them. I heard a guy say one time, if you want to go to work for God, Look around, see where God is working, and jump in. And if you don't like that, go look somewhere else. I, it's that simple. Yes, Jesus is coming back. When is that going to be? It could be tonight. It could be tomorrow. It could be 10 years from now. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. I know this. We're closer today, John Carroll, we're closer today than we were yesterday. Now, what does that mean exactly? We still don't know when it is, but it wasn't yesterday. Is it tonight? Is it tomorrow? Is it next week? So here's the idea, and here's my recommendation. And here are Jesus' exact words. Immediately, get off the couch and go out there and go to work for God. <laughs> this immediately, I don't understand where we confuse immediately with, well, I'll get to that tomorrow. That That's a big seminary word called procrastination. Yeah, putting off till tomorrow what you could have done today. Well, what if Jesus comes back tonight? Then you've procrastinated a little too long. 
immediately listen to the, the words Jesus says about the servants or the slaves. Immediately, the one who had received the five talents went and traded with them and he gained five more talents or she gained five more talents. In the same manner, the one who had received two went and gained two more. Immediately, they, they didn't sit around. They didn't have coffee. <clears throat> now, y'all know last week I got that big poster up. Uh, the poster that says, Make a Dent, Matthew 25. I actually intended to go get that, and I could have held it up. You'll have to look at the videos. It's sitting behind me in every video since this year started. Um, make a dent in someone's life. I, and, and last week, I kind of went down the trail of money. Well, if you're an educator, can't you make a dent in someone's life by teaching a little, tutoring some? I think so. If, if you're a police officer, instead of, and I don't, I don't know much about the law. That's well established. Well, I don't know much about being on this side of the law. I, a well-versed outlaw. We'll just say that. Instead of arresting someone, couldn't you just help them out? Seeing I, I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I'm not big on law. Uh, preachers, couldn't we preach outside the church somewhere? I think we could. If you're retired, if you're kind of an older person and you're retired already, pass some of your wisdom down to those of us that are still working, to those of us that are trying to retire, to those of us that are trying to save enough money that we know how to live when we retire. Everybody has to handle money these days. We all balance checkbooks. If you're extra talented in balancing a checkbook, share your talent. Hey, that's the exact same word in the Bible, isn't it? A talent, wisdom, talent. All of these things are, are represented here in, in this parable. And, and again, the majority of the parable is talking about when the master is gone and, and the, the trading of the talents is going on. Our master is gone. He, he's gone. His name is Jesus. We know where he is. We don't know when he's coming back. We better start trading with our talents now before it's too late and he comes back. Amen? So, friends, make a dent. Make a dent in someone's life with the wisdom and the knowledge that you have and the experiences that you've already experienced. If nothing, all of us can help somebody get over their fear of God because we don't see God the way this third servant did, do we? Amen. Okay, friends, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for a beautiful day. And thank you that we can gather, even though electronically, when we feel we have to be out of the church. Please heal our sick and be with those that are quarantining right now and give them the courage that if they need something, they know they can call somebody that has watched this video to help them. As we go from here, God, we ask you to bless us and keep us fully within your grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, friends.